Hello everybody and welcome back to How to See Make Good, Part 2A. Part 2 videos are going to focus on scripting and the execution of scripts. There are actually two contexts in which CMake scripts can run. One is configure context and the other is plain scripting context. We'll get into plain scripting later. It's actually a very powerful feature. In configure scripts, you'll have a source directory with a cmakelists.txt spelled exactly like that. And that's the root cmakelists. And this is a CMake script, even though it ends with .txt, it is a scripting language. If you know much about CMake, you're probably aware of its reputation of having a very, very horrible scripting language, and it's hard to argue with that. The scripting language itself isn't unintuitive so much as extremely simplistic to a fault. The language is incredibly easy to understand, but very, very primitive. And that simplicity can get you in trouble sometimes. A CMake script is an imperative scripting language. Those familiar with other project management tools might be more familiar with a declarative style that you'd find in package.json and the like. CMake scripts are somewhat declarative, and we'll talk more about that later. Now CMake script, of course, starts at the first line. And everything in CMake is a command, which is more of just a fancy way of saying a function. They look like a regular function call where you have a command name, an open parenthesis, a list of arguments, a close parenthesis, and a new line. Now you cannot have two commands on the same line. That's a syntax error, but the white space outside of commands is insignificant otherwise. So all you need is a new line after the closing parenthesis and you're free to move the white space anywhere you want. To start a configure mode script, we always start at the root with a CMake minimum required. We say a version number and we'll say what minimum CMake version we want. I'll use 3.12. Now like any decent language, we can also add comments like this. It may be useful to start your project off with a comment that describes it. Of course, CMake ignores comments. In a configure mode script, you'll also want to follow up shortly after the minimum required with a project call. It doesn't need to be the first thing afterwards, but you will want it before you start declaring any targets. You do need the project call in the root cmakelists.txt. If you do not put it there, CMake will behave a little strangely and call the project function for you. We see some basic commands. Here's two. These are built into CMake. See my editor highlights them in blue because it recognizes them. Now the only type in CMake is the string. Everything is string, which is one of its downfalls. Here, in project, I'm passing three arguments. The first is my project, which is a string. It's not a variable, it's not a command, it's just a string. Even though I haven't quoted it. If I wrap it in quotes like this, it's exactly the same. There are a few cases where quoting an argument might change the behavior of the CMake script, and we'll cover those shortly. But just know that everything you pass to is just a string. So my project is a string, version is a string, and 1.0.0 is also a string. And there are three separate arguments. We don't place commas in between, all we place is white space. And that white space can be moved and shifted as we need to align and format our code to look nice and readable. CMake also, of course, lets you print output with the message function. The first argument to message is the message mode. When in doubt, just use status. Then pass the string argument you want to print. I'll run the configure, and it prints our message right here. Note that the quotes here are significant. Because this argument has white space in it, we need the quotes to prevent it from passing each argument as a separate item. If we remove them, behavior changes and the message just prints each argument concatenated together with no space. So remember to put those quotes when they're necessary. We'll talk more about when they're necessary and how they affect behavior. Of course, CMake also has variables. You don't set them with an assignment operator. Instead, you use the aptly named set command. First is the variable name, my variable, and then the value. To get at the variable's value, you use the dollar brace syntax. CMake purely uses string interpolation syntax. Start with a dollar, then an open brace, then the variable name, then the closing brace. This will expand the value of the variable in line in this string before passing it to the message command. We'll run configure again, and it prints the value of the variable in the message. Many other commands besides set can also set variables. We'll talk about those more later. Some commands set special variables with names implicitly, such as the project call. It sets a variable called project name among others, which contains the value of the name parameter passed to the most recent call to project. I run configure again, the value of the project name is printed in our message. Other names include project version. 
Any changes we make to the value passed to project are reflected in our variable reference. That's the very bare bones basics of using the CMake scripting language. In 2B we'll be diving more into the scripting language and more of the complex things you can do with it. Until then, check the video description for any addenda, errata, links, or important information. And until next time, keep CMaking good.